Man, I'm getting sick and tired of every Sonic game starting off in Green Hill. Generations, Mania, Forces, Frontiers, Battle. What do you mean this is Emerald Town? Use your eyes and look closely. Brown and green checkerboards, palm trees, and sunflowers. I see right through your disguise, Buster. Yeah, I know it's a stretch to call this Green Hill, but like, the set pieces are there. I'm kind of amazed they went this route when designing the hub. I mean, Green Hill can actually be unlocked after beating Emerald's chapter, so they might have been alluding to that, I guess. Nowadays, we wouldn't let either of those slide, but this was all the way back in 2004, so... I would consider this one of the neat things I found in Sonic Battle. Now, is this game neat enough to sport any other references? Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, there were two big ones that I found. The first of which is the Gimme Shelter. So the location itself is not based off of anything outside of the Sonic universe. However, apparently this place was named after the Rolling Stones song with the same name. Uh, to be honest, I kind of thought that was also a stretch, but I double-checked the wiki, and they say it's true, so I think I'm gonna go along with it. The other reference is in a character's moveset. There is one, technically two, that are undoubtedly paying homage to another franchise. When Tails uses either of his set attacks, he spawns in a tiny mouse. The names of these are Chew Square Bomb and Air Chew Square Bomb. Any Sega fanatic will connect the dots immediately, but just in case you're not with the times, this is a nudge to an older title, Choo Choo Rocket, a cute action puzzle game on the Dreamcast where we guide these mice, known as Choo Choo's, to a rocket. While talking about special moves, there's actually two things I need to address from the challenge because I, I got like 50 billion comments explaining them. Seriously though, thank you for enlightening me. First thing, I did not completely understand how choosing the special moves worked. Obviously, there's picking one for the ground and the air, then the last one has our character blocking. When I saw this, I thought this was the game's way of telling us that this move was being turned into the shield. However, in reality, it's something much handier. Whatever category the block is selected on, that will be the kinds of moves we will automatically shield for. So, let's just say I have Set as my block. When I make contact with the opponent's Set attack, it will not damage me. Instead, I will automatically shield this Set attack and all other Set attacks without needing to press the L button because I selected my block on Set. I apologize for the hand-holdy explanation, but that was literally the way that I got my head to understand it. <laughs> This also explains why we would see someone blocking a special attack while airborne. The game is doing that for us. The second thing is about Rouge's don't use special moves fight in Amy's chapter. In the challenge, I literally dismissed the message and beat her up with the special moves without suffering any consequences. I think I understood why that was the case after running it back a second time, but y'all explained it in a way where I could wrap my head around it. Basically, the game wasn't coded incorrectly, it was just coded weirdly. So, let me show you Sonic's grounded shot. It may not look like it, but that move had two different attacks. The Shockwave, and Sonic bouncing backwards. Despite both being part of the same special move, only the Shockwave is classified as the special move, while Sonic is considered a normal attack. Emerald's grounded shot is literally just Sonic's, but without the shockwave. So, by that knowledge, this game is technically correct in thinking that this special move is a normal attack because it's missing the part that makes it special, which is why we're allowed to use it in that battle. In fact, if you play this mission with Sonic's grounded shot, you can beat her up with that special move as long as you don't hit her with the shockwave. This also works for the ultimate grounded shot, too. Most of Emerald's specials, and to an extent his entire moveset, are taken directly from Sonic and made bad. So, the same logic applies to his set attacks. The mine is the special part, so without it, it becomes normal. While on the subject of y'all telling me something I didn't know, uh, 
I decided that I would be nice today and dedicate a chunk of this video to little suggestions that y'all gave me. You know, it's just a small way to say thank you for 15k. There is actually a big thing I'm doing for 15k, uh, I actually, I should actually have a video up explaining everything about it. Whenever you have the time, uh, please check it out, uh, preferably whenever you finish this video. Anywho, first of which, Gamma will explode when he loses all of his health. If we choose Gamma's fighting pose, it will allow Emerald to also explode when he faints. That totally makes perfect sense, and I'm ashamed to say that I never would have thought of that. Here's a strange one. A character's turnaround speed is based on the character's fighting pose, not their run speed. I think it would be best to show this off with Sonic's pose first. Here we can see Emerald turn and move in the opposite direction almost immediately, and then you see he slows down. That's because I'm using Emerald's slow walk speed in conjunction with Sonic's fast turn. Now let me show you what happens when we combine Chaos's pose with Sonic's speed. The exact opposite happens. Here it is again, but with Tails's pose and Chaos's run. Yeah, it's easy to recognize the change in speed, I'm quite amused with how it works. Similar to how some of his trash special moves are considered normal attacks, some of Ultimate Emerald's normal attacks are considered special moves. I thought they were just adding that for some visual flair, but no, some of the familiar effects maintain their special properties. Like in Emerald's ultimate third attack, there's a rock blast that looks like it came straight out of Knuckles' shot attacks. Well, we'd be correct in saying that, because if the block is set onto shot, it will automatically block this normal attack because it contains special properties. Ain't that swell. Don't you just hate it when that pesky super meter depletes after only a single use? Have we got the trick for you! First, play as Emerald, make sure you have his terrible air shot selected, then start filling it up. Once we're fully charged, jump on top of the enemy, then right before we land, press the R button. If timed correctly, the enemy will collapse from a single hit, but we will still be glowing, as our special meter is still full. This is because, for absolutely no reason, this specific move empties the bar during the recoil animation. Ergo, if we land on the ground right before the recoil occurs, we can theoretically have unlimited super juice. And since the enemies have no way of blocking this special attack, we are able to spam the move with zero drawbacks. Would you believe me if I told you that this is a strategy in speedruns? While on the subject of the super meter, I found out that it actually has a very exquisite name. I was looking through the comments and I stumbled upon each coral gauge and I was like, what the f***? That's a fancy word I've never heard before. Ichikoro, a Japanese word which means to trounce or to beat someone hands down. I've also read that it is a combination of the words Ichi, which is the number one in Japanese, and Koro, which is derived from the word Korori, a Japanese onomatopoeia for when someone or something falls down. So putting them together, it basically translates to knocking someone down in a single hit. A one-shot, if you will, which is exactly what this does in-game. I don't know, y'all. Learning about phrases from other languages is honestly kind of fire. I can barely speak English as it is, so I, I really, really hope I didn't get any of that wrong. Speaking of getting things wrong... I do my best not to trash talk any of the games that I cover, but... Man, I'm kinda questioning if they really did playtest this. Some of the mistakes they left in... I kinda don't have any words for, honestly. It's not like a, ah, funny glitch go brrrr mistake. It's more along the lines of, this was in plain sight, why wasn't this fixed mistake. Maybe something went wrong with the localization, I don't know, but, whew, the dialogue has grammatical errors out the wazoo. You again? How many time do I have to? Your punch got not juice, fool. Dr. Eggman gave me a emerald shard. And I'm sure we're all aware of Shadows. You're free now. Eggman no longer will no longer have any control over you. In the opening cutscene for Cream's chapter, they misspelled the Gimme Shelter by leaving out one of the M's in Gimme. Right before the final fight, Sonic refers to THE Master Emerald as A Master Emerald. 
and I'm not 100% on this one, but it still feels wrong. At the start of Emerald's chapter, Eggman says, Chaos and Gamma are useless too. I believe this is the first time Chaos is ever mentioned in the story, and Eggman isn't affiliated with him in this game, so... I don't know, it just feels a bit weird to just name drop him like that all of a sudden. I think this may be some kind of mistranslation, and the line was supposed to read, Chaos Gamma is useless too. Because that's his actual name in this game. The mistakes don't even stop there. In Rouge's chapter, there is a mission where we have to avoid getting hit for two minutes. A normal person would try to outrun her, and if we get hit, then we fail. However, let me show you the correct way to beat it. Once the match starts, we're going to click pause and select quit. Once we're loaded back into the map, the game acts as if we completed the challenge and continues with the story. We can do that twice in this game. At some point in Tails' chapter, Emerald and Knuckles are supposed to duke it out, but quitting this one will also skip the battle entirely. It boggles me that they left these kinds of errors in the final release. Where was I? Haha, <laughs> yeah, silly stuff. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, we can do it in two places. Hell yeah. Tapping the L button brings out a protective shield. This is a universal thing among the cast. The only one who doesn't follow suit with this is Cream. She lacks the special effect, but in exchange, Cheese becomes her bodyguard. It is just such a cute little detail that it had to be mentioned. Lastly for this video, we'll be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna go over some of Sonic Battle's representation in other Sonic media. I figured it would be interesting because Let's face it, this is a lesser known title on the Game Boy Advance, and I was uh, quite surprised to find out that this game impacted a lot more than just those old Flash games. Starting off with Sonic Advance 3, which borrows a few assets from it, like Eggman builds his own fighting robot using Emerald's data and straight up calls it Gemeral, it also remixes two tracks. The music for the Colosseum makes a comeback in the final boss, Non-Aggression. And the song for Holy Summit was redone in Alter Emerald. It's a little hard to hear, at least for me, but it's there. The next one is very obvious, but just in case you didn't know, Emerald Beach was lucky enough to get a remix in Sonic Generations. We get to listen to it with actual instruments in a few of the missions. In addition to that, Emerald gets a quick mention. There's a billboard in City Escape promoting a fake movie called Challenge Space 2. It's a bit blurry in-game, so let me show you a higher quality photo. Aha, uh -huh, now we can actually see the names of the cast members at the bottom. And, as you can expect, one of them just so happens to be Emerald. Oh yo! Marine and Chipper here too! I mean, this was an anniversary title way back in 2011, so at the time, it's not too far-fetched to see those names here, but seeing this in 2024, I'm just like, wow, these guys really haven't seen the light of day in like 15 years. I think it's weirder with Emerald because I, I can tell Sega loves the guy, he's probably been referenced the most out of those three, but his only real, in-the-flesh game appearance was in Battle. In the London 2012, Sochi 2014, and Rio 2016 Olympic Games, Emerald is one of the outfits that our Mies can dress up as. He was also used for the Fighting Viper sticker in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, 
and is card number 138 in Sonic Rivals 2. Also, I want to take your attention to card number 123, which is of Mephiles. It has nothing to do with this video, I've just never seen this render before, and it looked so metal that I just could not ignore it. Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood, the most batch Sonic game I have ever seen, is for some reason the game that tells us where Emerald comes from. He was created thousands of years ago by the Nocturnus clan, the main bad guys of the story. And it wasn't just him, they built an entire Gizoid army. That is somehow not even the craziest one to me. Emerald was not only acknowledged, but was also briefly the main focus in one of the TV shows, that being Sonic X. The anime was doing its own thing for the first season, but when season 2 came along, they made the interesting decision to retell some of the stories from the video games. They did it for Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, you know, the mainline games, and Battle, the handheld spin-off. Hey, look, he's doing the pose! It may have only been for five episodes, but man, it is still righteous seeing him get love and attention on the telly. And lastly, probably my favorite, Emerald technically made it into Smash Bros. In Brawl, if you look in the Sonic section of the sticker collection, you should be able to spot that handsome little robot. Number 692 to be exact. Before we end this, I'm gonna get off topic again because I literally will never have another opportunity to mention this. If we go into the vault, open up Chronicles, and look in the Game & Watch section, we can find Mickey Mouse inscribed in the Smash Bros. universe. I'm hoping this video does well because that last bit might open up some floodgates. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day! And now, the Patreon supporters, brought to you by Maud. Father of the Hamter and Page Fighting Master, so dark who fossil and triff. Gianna Tim Mercury got lots of spaghetti and Tabitha Harvey Youssef. Also, I made a change to the outro. Like, no joke this time. I'm planning on having the plant dance to a song from the game the video is based on. If I can't find a good one, then I'll just use Lance's theme from Pokemon Stadium 2 like I usually do. Uh, this will be an easy one for y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all can get it.